one experience that I had that was very scary. We, our company, our battalion was told to take a certain town, maybe middle-sized town, and it was at, it was after the balls. Captain called regiment. No enemy is in the town there. He says, go down there and take that little dairy town about two miles away. I think the town's name was Schwarzenborn. We're walking into the sun. Mm -hmm. And this is our company. Now, we're Abel Company. We got Baker on the right, Charlie on the left, and they're spread way out. And there was a big dairy barn about 50 yards in front of us. We got about 20 yards from the dairy barn. It was a uh, a barn made out of cement blocks. It was a big barn. The Germans started shooting at us from the back. Mm -hmm. They had a Tiger tank about 200 yards away in one direction. And most of us in that patrol ran into the barn. Could have been about in the barn, I would say, 50, 60 people in the barn. It was a big barn. And we returned the fire. After prolonged fighting, we figured that we were in a losing battle here. So, sergeant, one of the sergeants says, Willie, I need you over here with the machine gun. And he said, bring the medic with you and the radio man. Prior to that, he had given the radio man orders to call regiment and tell him we needed cannon fire here because we were three-sided covered by Germans. And regiment asked him, we need the coordinates. Of course, you can't give them coordinates. You don't have a map in front of you and it's getting dark. The barn was burning a little bit at the roof. And it wasn't quite dark yet. You can still see smoke. We told regiment to hit that smoke stack you see about a mile and a half, two miles down the road. And they said, well, who's in the barn? We said, the regiment said, we are. Well, we may kill some of you. Yeah, but you'll kill the Germans around us. That was the exact words. Mm. So that was the orders we gave regiment. In the meantime, Sergeant Campo asked us to come man that, and we started across the barn. And if you know anything about Holstein cows, they're pretty high up, pretty big. So we started across the barn, Doc Nisley and, and Crow and myself, I was in the middle. We got stuck in between these cows. And we went more than an inch apart from each other and a shell hits the roof. Hmm. And Nisley falls forward dead. I know he's dead because there was no more movement after the shell hit. And Crow gets hit in the arm or the back and I get shrapnel on my shoulder and the two car cows fall sideways dead. So that ends our communication with Sergeant Campo. He's no more with us, you see. And so the barn is on in pretty bad shape. And this other sergeant, Tony Galgano, the one that I told you the captain has all the faith in the world for, him. he comes, he calls me, said, Willie, I'm hurt. I said, where are you, Tony? I said, he says, against the hall, wall there. So I walked in the direction of his voice, and he's sitting down. So I sat by him, I said, wait, you're hurt. He says, my leg is hurt and my arm. I felt it was like, if you took a football and cut it the long way, that would be the size of the gash on his leg. So I got my penicillin little tube, spread it on my hand and rubbed it over his leg. Then I got his and rubbed it over his arm. There were big gashes. And that's what I told him, Tony, I'm going to try to get you out of here. I don't know to this day how I got him out of there. But I believe in angels. He weighed close to 185 and heavier because he has equipment on. At that time I was 135. I'm 25 pounds heavier now than I was. 
when I told Tony I'm going to get you out of here. Hmm. Now, I knew what door to go out. I thought I knew. But as soon as we opened that door, there was a tiger tank shooting at shadows that was crossing the road. There was a black top road. So how him and I got across the road, I think I either dragged him or he helped me drag himself across the road with me. Luckily along, once we crossed the road, there was a tree line. So we crossed the road, and if we can go about 150 yards, there was a jeep that far away. I got him to the jeep. I said, get him out of here. He's hurt real bad. Well, you jump on too. I said, no, I got metal on my back, but I'm all right. Just get him out of here. I said, there was about 15 left in the barn. Well, not that many. I'm going back in the barn. So the seven of us, when, and the sun is starting to come up. See, there's a big lapse of time in the fighting here. Sun is starting to come up. So we get out this door, and there seemed to be a blacktop road to the left of it. We start going down, running down the Black Top Road. Now there's seven of us left after this engagement. We can't go back how we originally got into the barn because that's where the trap was. We walked in that way. They were shooting from to our backs. So we saw two Germans washing in the brook. They had the metal helmet and a towel, and they must have just got up. Now these two Germans were not involved in the battle. They could be headquarters or something, see, they were away from the battle. They ran in one direction, we ran the opposite direction. We ran up a big meadow and a knoll of a meadow, a uh, hill there. And the machine gun opened up on us, and we ran down that hill. We got to the bottom of the hill, and one of the fellas had a bullet hole through his mouth and out his cheek, a bullet had gone in his mouth and out the cheek. And one of them said, Willie, you okay? And I said, yeah. I got metal on my back, but I'm all right. How about your head? <laughs> I put it up like this, and I said, my head's there. I said, look at your helmet. There was a bullet hole in the back of my metal helmet the size of a quarter. Mm. And there was the hole in the front. The steel helmet, and I looked at one the other day, is about a quarter of an inch thick. Could be three-eighths, but that's how thick it is. Then I have the plastic helmet underneath that. And if you say my helmet was bouncing up and down, and that bullet puts that size of a hole in it, it's going to knock it off. It's going to knock it off. There's no way that it's not going to knock it off. So we finally got to the bottom of the hill and there was a little town there further into Germany now. This is not up where the fighting is. We find a German person there. <laughs> we captured him. Seven of us captured one young man, not one old man. We said, no. Where are our, our gun emplacements? And uh, he says, this way. We said, you're going to take us that way or we're going to kill you. Just like that. So you better not be lying. So we start taking us back to our heavy weapons emplacement. So when we got to the emplacement, at the headquarters there, they took him and put him in prison someplace. I don't know what they did with him. And I went to the hospital, and the girl says, sorry, you can't have your helmet. I says, why? I want to keep the helmet. No, when you get back up on the front lines, they said, you're going to have to have a clean helmet, a new helmet. You can't have a one that's broke. <laughs>